Ash, breathe. Ash, breathe. Breathe, Ash. Breathe, Ash. Alright, get the fire out. To describe freediving, the feeling it gives you is almost a euphoric feeling. You're sort of in your own little world, you can feel your heartbeat, you can feel all your major senses in your body. You know, you're so mobile and agile under the water, you're just sort of at one with all the fish and marine life down there. The whole thing's about slowing your heart rate down, being really, really slow, slowing your need for breath down. And as soon as you're really, really relaxed after a good breather and you go down, it just feels like time, so the ticking just slows down. I think that's when you get your most comfortable underwater, when it, when it just appears as if everything around is just in slow motion. Of course, you know, when you're down on the bottom, whether it's you know, out of depth and you look up and you can't see the surface, you know, you're going to panic, you know, you think, oh, I'm not going to make it up, I'm not going to make it up. But what comes with experience, I've found, is just your mind just needs to overwrite those thoughts straight away. So whether it's a shark that you see or whether you're just too deep or you get a little bit tangled in the reef or something, your mind automatically needs to jump over and shut out the fear that, that may come in. I think it's 50% mental and 50% physical. So when you're down there, obviously you're mental, you just want to really keep calm and just keep in control of all your thoughts. You just want to sort of find a happy place. I'll just close my eyes and it's just the purest blue you can imagine, sort of as far as the eye can see, just crystal clear blue with no traffic, no smoke, no noise, no pollution. When you sort of descend down, you just really feel one with the water. Freediving, it's, it's a sport where you're a very dangerous sport where you're always pushing your limits. So you know every time you enter the water, there's no guarantee that you're coming back. And that's not being dramatic, that's just understanding that you're going into an environment where you know, you're not the top of the food chain. There's, there's a lot of things that are um, sort of bigger and nastier than you underwater. And then if they don't get you, then you, know, you can kill yourself by um, blacking out underwater and pushing your limits too far. Yeah, so we we're um, spearfishing and filming off the Great Barrier Reef. We're um, 40 miles, which is a two hour boat ride off Cairns. And um, just a normal day that we've done thousands of times, we we're um, chasing some big pelagic fish. It was a magnificent day. It was perfect. The water was that flat and so clean, and there were fish everywhere. It was just like any other day on the water. You know, the water was clean, the water was deep, the fish were on, and I just went that bit too hard. Yeah, as spotted a nice big fish down deep and then sort of chased it as he would normally, didn't you? you went... Yeah, I went down after the fish and um, followed, followed it, you know, well within my limits, I thought. But, you know, you get caught up in the moment and, you know, I didn't want to let the sort of a fish of a lifetime get away from me. And there's always that sort of sense, you know, you, you're there with a group of really good Spearos and you want to, you know, you want to back yourself. Went down deeper, deeper, followed it a bit longer than I should have and um, shot the fish. And that's where it all sort of blacked out for me and I don't remember anything else. Oh. <laughs> 
kicked in and I was just started giving him mouth to mouth on the surface trying to get some oxygen back into him and um, and luckily that um, after about you know 45 seconds of, of mouth to mouth on the surface you know he eventually came back to it so you know thank goodness that's, that's breathe it's all right, it's all right. breathe mate breathe hang on to the boat <laughs> breathe mate hold the boat hold the boat just chill to see the life yeah, drain out of your best mate's face. He was not responding, had him on the surface for almost two minutes, um, resuscitating him. And you know, about a minute into that, it all flashed through like, oh, I'm, I'm not gonna get my best mate back. Like, you know, he's gone, he's gone too long. And then everything runs through your head like, well, what's my life gonna be like? You know, without Az, without my best mate, I'm gonna have to sort of rebuild my life. Yeah, it's, it's a yeah, horrible experience, yeah, horrible. It's a bit cliche, but it's only cliche because it's true how, you, you know, you say if you look at life differently. You know, I remember he was in hospital overnight and I was there by his bed all overnight. And then when they let him out of hospital, we went for a big long walk down the Esplanade and just, um, just spoke about sort of life. You know, how much you take it for granted. You know, you think you're making plans for the next week and the next month and you just assume you're going to be there. But, you know, you've got to take a step back and, you know, smell the roses, so to speak. You've got to look around and appreciate everything you've got going for you at the moment because you might not be there forever to appreciate it. As and I have spoken about it and you know we've had a few teary sort of nights. Yeah he's just been you know very very thankful for for the whole thing. You know every time I'm underwater now I still get you know the, the vivid flashbacks of as um, you know with his eyes rolled back sinking to the bottom so it was it was a fight that we both had to go through together to build back up with baby steps. And um, yeah, we weren't going to let each other, you know, go off the track or anything. We were going to help each other out to we're back where we where we are now. It's our passion. It's our love. It's all we think about. You know, life's not worth living if you can't do what you want to do. And then we thought whether you know it took a month, a year, whatever it was, we had to get back into it. Um, a piece of advice for any group of people would have to be. Go and find something that you love doing, whatever it is, you know, whether it's archery, whether it's free diving, whether it's hang gliding, anything, and do it as much as you possibly can. You know, everyone's got a limited amount of time on this planet, and I think find what you love doing and do it as much as you can, because you know, at the end of the day, that's what brings you happiness. You know, that's what we're put here for. That's what it's all about. You know, that happiness to yourself. <laughs> 